In this lecture, we'll develop the boundary layer equations which govern the fluid behavior in the boundary layer, and then use these to come up with uh, equations for the evolution of the momentum and kinetic energy defects that we de developed last time. Um, and we determined that those were related to, um, that those were used to relate the viscous and inviscid flows on a constant mass flow basis. So what we lack up to now are these uh, are equations that describe how uh, the kinetic, uh, or sorry, the momentum defect P and the kinetic energy defect K or their associated thicknesses theta and theta star evolve in a boundary layer. To get to that, we'll start by developing the governing equations in the boundary layer. At high Reynolds numbers, the boundary layers will generally be thin compared to their streamwise lengths. Now, given that, in our SN coordinates, which are parallel and normal to the body surface, we can then assume that the V component, the N component of the velocity, is much smaller than U, the S component. This comes from the fact that the streamlines are nearly parallel to the body. We can also then say that DUDS is much smaller than DUDN because the normal gradients are much stronger than the streamwise ones. And finally, that DPDN is approximately zero, because the pressure is basically going to be constant in the boundary layer at a given S location. So that P of S and N is just the edge pressure at S. And this means that DPDS can be replaced with an edge velocity gradient. So negative DPDS, which we're saying is negative DPE DS, is going to be rho E U E D U E D S because the external flow, um, which has pressure P E, is governed by uh, Bernoulli's equation or sorry, by the inviscid uh, Euler equations. We'll also have a contribution related to the normal velocity, but this second term is small so that we can just say that in general, rho e u e e u e ds is negative d p d s. So I want to explain this a little bit more. So for inviscid, incompressible flow, we can write the rho dudt is equal to negative grad p. In the s direction, that gives rho u dudf plus rho v dn equals negative dpds. Now if we apply this at the boundary layer edge uh, E, and using the fact that V is much smaller than U, this gives negative dpds is approximately equal to rho U E E U E yes. So this term while not explicitly having pressure in it, is actually a pressure gradient term. Applying all the approximations to the Navier-Stokes momentum equation gives us rho u dvs plus rho v dvn is equal to rho e u e d u e d s plus 
viscous term mu plus mu t d the n. And we also have mass conservation, which is rho uh, d of rho u ds plus d dn of rho v is equal to zero. So these are the two boundary layer equations. Here is mu t is the Boussinesque eddy viscosity. And this captures the effect of turbulence, so it's zero for a laminar flow. The boundary conditions that are used to solve these equations are at the walls, where n is zero, we have that u is zero and v is zero. So this is the no slip condition. And at the edge of the boundary layer, where n is ne, we have that u is ue. Now the same equations apply for jets, wakes, and mixing layers, but the boundary conditions would be different. So for now, we'll restrict ourselves just to the flow uh, in a boundary layer. For incompressible flow, on, uh, only some turbulence model um, so that we can get mu t of s and n is needed, and then we can solve the boundary layer equations for the uh, streamwise and normal velocity components u and v.